In this video, we'll talk about type conversion and type casting. So in the previous video, we have talked about variables, how to create a variable. And then one thing is for sure, in fact, two things, every variable needs a name. So we have talked about it and every variable needs a type as well. So if you want to get a variable for numbers, you will say int, float, double or long. In fact, we have subtypes as, as well for int. And then if you want to store a character, we can use char. If you want to store a Boolean value, we have Boolean option. And then we also have a string, which we'll talk about that later. At this point, we have a lot of different types. Now there's one confusion. What if you want to change the type of a variable? Uh, can we really do that? So unfortunately we can't, we can't change the type of a variable, but then can you assign a value to other type? Example, let's say uh, we have a variable which is of type byte. So I'm using a byte variable, which is B, and it will have a value. Now, of course, we have talked about a range of byte as well. You can have maximum 127 plus, I mean, plus 20, 127. This is the max value you can accommodate here. But can you assign an integer value? That's a question. So what if you have a variable of type int a and the value of a is 256. Now what will happen if you try to assign this a value, which is 256 into b? Something like this. What if I say b is equal to a? So what I'm doing now is I'm assigning a value of integer to byte. Now, unfortunately, this will not work. But what will work? The reverse will work. What if you have a variable which is a and then you're trying to assign a value which is b? this will work. So what happens is the type of A is integer, right? It has a bigger range and byte has a small range. So your compiler says, hey, you're trying to assign a integer value to byte. And at this point you will lose, you might lose some data. So basically we are trying to convert it and we just narrowing it, right? So we are narrowing the size of it. On the other hand, if you talk about this operation here, we are widening it because this, the range of byte is small and integer is a bigger one. So of course you can put a, a small items in a bigger box, but if you put a bigger item in a small box, it will not work, right? Okay, cool. So that makes sense, right? But then what if you really want to do it? You want to convert an integer value into byte. See, at this point, if the value of A is not 2 to 6, what if the value of A is, let's say, 12? Now, the value of A is 12, which can be accommodated in B as well. So at this point, even your compiler will say, hey, I, I don't know what your value of A is, but I will not allow you to store the value of A in B because A is integer and B is byte. So in this case, you can say, hey, compiler, give me one second here. What uh, you can do is you can say B is equal to, you can convert A, you can do a conversion by saying, you can give a bracket and you can mention the type or in which type you want to convert. You can say byte and you can mention the variable name A. So what you're doing is you're converting integer value into the byte format. Okay. Now this concept is called casting. So basically this is actually a conversion, but explicitly you're doing it. So whenever you do explicit conversion, it is called casting. So when I say explicit, there should be implicit as well, right? And that is correct. We have some conversions which are implicit. Example, if you talk about this particular operation here, this is an implicit conversion. Basically, you're trying to store a byte value into an integer variable. So it becomes an integer when you assign it, right? So this is a conversion, okay? So when you do it explicitly, that is casting. When you is opening, if it is happening automatically, that is conversion. Now this makes sense, right? Now, is it means you can do it with anything? Uh, not exactly. There are certain types. Example, you can't store a character value into a Boolean value. Okay, because Boolean only supports true and false and character supports all the characters. So you can't do those, those conversions, but if, if anything in the range of integer float double actually works. Example, uh, we have talked about integer and byte. If it is long as well, that completely works. Now, what if you have a scenario where you want to store maybe of type uh, a float value? Now, let's say you have an integer variable here, which is int, let's say x is equal to, and you're trying to assign a float value. Now, float value is, let's say 5.6. Of course, I, I can create a float variable. I can assign this value to that. Or maybe this is double because we don't have f. So let's say this, this is double and then you're trying to assign that to an integer. Now what will happen is, in this case, even this will not work. So what you have to do is you have to, do a, you have to convert it. So what I will do now is, let me just create a float variable here. So I will say float f is equal to 5.6. And remember you have to put f at the end. Now if you try to put f, it will not work. So what you have to do is you have to explicitly convert this value into integer. So what you're doing is you're assigning a float value to an integer. So you're converting it. Now what you will lose here. So at this point you will lose your point values. 
So whatever value you have in after that point, you will lose it. Example, the value of 5 point, it is 5.6. So here when you convert that, it, it becomes 5. So in the X, the value you will be getting is only 5. Cool. Uh, so it makes sense, right? So for float, it will cut the value. But coming back to byte now, what will happen when you talk about byte here? What do you think? We don't have point values. So if you have a bigger number, uh, example, let's say this is not one, this is not 12. Let's say we have a bigger number here. And the bigger number is, let's say, 257. Now, what will happen when you assign 257? Because the range ends at 127. You can't go beyond that, right? So in this case, it will use a concept of modulus, okay, or modular operator. So what modular will do is it will divide this number. So whenever you try to assign an integer value to byte, which, which we are doing here. So when you're trying to assign a integer value to a byte, it will convert that into a modulo, which is it will divide the number A, which is 257, and it will find the percentage. Okay, so 257 percentage, which is a modulo symbol, and it will divide it with a range, okay, which is 256. Because the complete range of byte is 256, right? From minus 128 to plus 127. And then the remainder you will get here is one, cool. So the answer here, when you try to do it with the 257, it will be one. I will show you that in the code. So coming back to the code, let's try all this operation which we talked about. So what we'll do is we'll start with a integer value. We can say, we can, or maybe we can start with byte. So we can say byte b is equal to, and maximum you can have is 127. Let's take that value. And let's try to, print it here. So we can say system dot out dot print ln. And here let's print the value of B. So when you save that and you, when you go back here, when you, write, when you write run this, so we say Java C and hello dot Java, compilation done. Let's run this code. I can say Java space. I have to run with the class file, which is hello. And you can see we got 127. Now what will happen if you try to do that with uh, 257? It will not work. First of all, it will say error. You can see we got the error. It says incompatible types because it is integer type. Now 257. Okay, so we can say 127 here. Now next, what I'm going to do is I want to create an integer variable here, which is int. Int n is equal to, and I can assign a value. Maybe let's say a because we have used that. So we'll say a, and then the value we are going to assign is of b. So can you assign a byte value to integer because this is this is where you're doing converting, and if you try to print the value of a, let's try that. In fact, there's one more thing which is which came recently in Java. So basically, you know, we always do two steps, right? First, you compile the code and then you run the code, right? So you compile that with the help of Java C. And when you compile it, you see you say hello.java. And when you run it, you say simply say Java and hello. You have to do two steps, right? So when you're into learning phase, why to do two steps? We can actually do in single step. Again, not recommended for a big project or not even for uh, a small project. Don't, don't even try that in your company. Uh, for learning purpose, we are doing it. So basically, we got a shortcut. We can say Java space hello dot Java directly. Maybe it is getting influenced by the other languages where you simply mention the command and a file name. No need to mention compile and run separate step. Let's try this and you can see it works. So you can see we got 127. It is perfectly working. And just to show you that things are happening behind the scene, uh, the value is getting changed. You can see we got 125. So from now, for whenever you have single file, we'll use this. But remember, this is just a shortcut. Ultimately, behind the scene, we need to do this, okay? I mean, when you build a project, first you have to compile the code, then run the code. This is a shortcut. And one more thing, this will work only in the recent version of Java, I guess from Java 14. Uh, if you have an older version of Java, this might not work. So if it's not working in your machine, that means you have an older version, upgrade your JDK version. Okay, cool. So now what I will do here is, we can assign the value, right? But what if you have an integer value, let's say int k, and now you are trying to assign, uh, or maybe let's let's get a byte value, byte k is equal to a. And let's come in this section. Instead of saying b, I want to assign a value which is 257. Now, even if you have a smaller value, let's say 12, even this will not work because ultimately the value, the, the I mean, the type of A is integer, right? You can't assign an integer to a, a byte format. And if you run this code, you can say it will give you error. It will say incompatible types. So we got one way, which is you can just cast it with byte. So we are doing a type casting here. So when you run this code now, it will work. You can see we got 12. Now we got 12 because it is in a range of byte. What happens when you have a bigger value, which is 257? 
Now this is out of range, right? So you can come back here, run, and you can see we got one. As I mentioned before, it will perform a modulus operation, which is actually finding the remainder. So it will divide this number by the byte range, which is 256. And it will find the remainder, which is one. I hope this makes sense, right? So we were able to do the byte conversion, in conversion, this is working. Let's try with float now. So let's say we have a float value, which is F, and the value of float is 5.6 F at the end. Uh, because whenever you get a float variable, you have to put at the, at, uh, f at the end. And then we can create a integer value. We can say int, let's say this time we'll go for t, doesn't matter what variable name you use. And then if you try to put f there, and if you try to print the value of t, let's see what happens. You can see we got error. Again, the same thing, it is. it, it says there might be loss of the value from this conversion. But then I want to do it, I want to convert that. So we can put a casting again, and we can say float here. And if you try to run this code, so you're trying to convert that into integer, right? What's wrong with me? And let's try now. And you can see we got five. So we lost that 0.6 there. Now this concept of casting is actually very important when you start working on the oops concept object in the further concept, this casting will be required there as well. At this point, we are doing casting on primitive values, but later on, we'll also work with objects. Okay, now we have talked about casting. So what is conversion? So conversion is automatic casting, or we can say conversion is automatic conversion, and uh, casting is explicit conversion. So when you specify something, it is explicit. Cool. Now, there's one more concept, which is type promotion. So what, are, what, what, what do you mean by type promotion? So let's say we have a byte value and the value for byte, let's say B or maybe let's say A and the value is 10 here. Okay, and then we got a byte which is B is equal to 20. And then when you perform the operation, maybe a, maybe this should be 120, right? Let's, let's say this is 30. Now when you perform an operation on this, let's say A into B, now, whenever you do A into B, it was, what, 300, right? So when you say 300 here, it is going out of byte. Now, can you save that into integer? Can I say int result is equal to A into B? Now, what is happening here? You're performing an operation on byte. So when you say byte multiplied by byte, it, it should be byte, right? But the problem is this value will go out of range. So Java says, hey, we will promote you. So this value will be promoted into an integer value. Okay, and you can store that into integer. So this is called type promotions. Let's run this and you can see we got an error because we are printing uh, T here. Let's print the result and run and you can see we got 300. So I hope it makes sense what is type conversion and casting and that's it from this video.